So this noise that is belligerent at this point, was that stressful? Yes. No. A little bit. That noise, especially the police sirens, can be more or less stressful for some folks. And rightly so. I mean, stress is normal. But healthily responding to stress is critical. I'm a psychotherapist working here in the Seattle area. And in my practice, I primarily work with youth of color. And with our current <laughs> political schism, people are stressed. Yes, even our youth are extremely stressed, and rightly so. Every day, we are met with a barrage of stressors. So commuting to work, or for instance, being stuck in traffic, or having to fit a really important exercise regimen in to move our bodies, or we might have an assignment that we need to complete. So whether it be for work or for school, all of these are stressors that we often experience, and they can leave us quite depleted. So what we know, though, is actually stress is normal. And there are two types of stress. So you stress and de-stress. Do people know that? Two types. I know. I learned this too. Um, so you stress is a positive stress. So this is the stress of getting on a roller coaster, all of that excitement, or having a challenging but really manageable work assignment to complete. So that's you stress. De-stress, on the other hand, is negative stress. So these are the little stresses we experience every day or stressors that can be traumatic over time. So the death of a loved one or an illness that may leave us incapacitated, these are all things that can lead to very traumatic and negative stress. And over time, these are some of the things that we can experience. And it can leave us leaving, feeling like this. So headaches, nausea, panic attacks, right? These are all things that I'm sure some of us have experienced dealing with stress. So as I'm sure all of you can also name, there are some groups or some experiences or some identities that may experience more stress, right? So women, for instance, or people of color with the many discrimination that happens throughout our daily lives. These are all groups that may experience more stress. So for instance, how would a young Latina mother and student be experiencing life? What are her challenges? What are her stressors? How may a young, newly immigrated primary student be experiencing life? What are her challenges? So in my practice, I had the pleasure of meeting Sasha. It's not a real name, but it is an ode to Beyonce. So I met Sasha, and I always got to have Beyonce with me. Um, and she was this vibrant 15-year-old young lady. Um, and I could see that. She was smart. She was spunky. She was engaged. But as we've heard today, she was struggling as a student. She was challenged. She could not complete her assignments. And as I was talking to her more, I learned that she couldn't sleep at night. You know, she felt really down, right? You start to really uncover some things. And as I was speaking to her, we spoke a lot about self-care, right? Which is very popular and very cool um, and very current. And so we talked a lot about how self-care was radical. Right? And that was something that I love to discuss, caring for ourselves, which is very, very important. But as I was speaking to Sasha, it became pretty apparent to me that the singular experience that she was having was actually completely connected to her community. So as I spoke to her more, we arrived here. Community care is radical. 
And community care was radical, in particular for Sasha, because there was not any hospitals in the area. There was not a job in which her mother could be adequately compensated in her neighborhood. There was not a local program or after school program or resource center for the young people. So truly, it was impossible for Sasha to ever reach the limit or to peak in self-care because her community had not received the care it needed. So community care is radical for two reasons. The first reason is, especially as Americans or people who live within the US, we are taught to be individualistic in our pursuits. Community care takes into consideration the person as a part of the whole. The second reason community care in particular is radical is because it allows vulnerable, vulnerable populations to receive the resources and care that they deserve and need. So community care looks like these three things for me. In my practice, this is what I learned. Awareness, affirmation, and access. So awareness. What is happening in my life? How am I connected to my community? How am I impacted by the macro, meso, and micro decisions that are made about my life? How are we all politically connected, socially connected, emotionally connected? So being able to have an awareness about where we situate ourselves, OK? The second thing was affirmation. So affirming that we are all having this experience that may leave us broken, that may leave us also in positive situations, but being able to have a conversation, especially with my young people, affirming and telling them that their experience matters and it's important. And then access. So I spoke a little bit about this, but resources. What is available to our youth? What kind of education are they receiving? What sort of hospital and medical benefits are they able to acquire? These are all really important things to consider when we think not just of self-care, but how we can be more radical in community care. The great poet, scholar, activist, Audre Lorde said, caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. So to close, I would like to actually read a piece written by me. And it is titled, A Letter to My Folks. Hey, y'all. You know, our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors, how uncompromising, how astute, talented, we're here. We survived. Some of us, not enough, have thrived. How grand, how deserving. And with this at our backdrop, I want to remind us as we move forward, we don't have to be burdened. We don't have to be limiting in our vision for ourselves, our communities, our people, our world. We can be radical and kind and complex. We can build strong, ethical, loving, families, relationships, leaderships, communities, governments. We're here. We're ready. We're survived. We're talented. We're multi-dimensional. We will continue to rise. We will continue to nurture ourselves, our communities, our offspring. For what else do we know? So we must dig deep, cover one another, build with our vulnerable neighbors, we can be radical. We can take care in solidarity.